In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom. Now and over to the age of all ages, amen. Um, welcome back, everyone. I hope you have a blessed uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and uh, I guess we'll get started. Um, today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Hatur. And um, if you have been following us um, or following the theme of the church during this time, the basic theme is relating to uh, two things. Um, the last two Sundays, if you recall, are relating to the parable of the sower. Um, and so, as you know, the seed is the word of God and the, and the, the soil is the heart. So those are the two things, the Holy, the, the Holy Bible and how it works in the Holy Heart, right? <clears throat> so um, today we say, if, if the seed was planted, right, in order for it to bear fruit, it has to be buried and die, right? And so the church in this Sunday says, um, if you want to be a disciple of Christ, if you want to bear fruits worthy of repentance, if you want um, to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you need to carry the cross. <laughs> um, and so um, uh, today uh, the church teaches us the requirements of discipleship. As the Lord says, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So we have to have a strong love for God, okay? Um, and it actually looks like um, almost to the point of hatred when it compares the love for God for the love of anything else. Um, <clears throat> as we'll see more in detail uh, next week when it comes to the fruits of uh, discipleship or the, the, the one who bears fruit um, serves. Okay, so you'll see the service um, of, of the apostles, God willing, uh, next week. So focusing though on today, I thought instead of um, going deep into the gospel itself, I thought because it's Thanksgiving, um, the Pauline epistle relates a little bit more um, to that um, part of, of the theme. <clears throat> so um, uh, St. Paul talks about being thankful when we, so part of the aspect of carrying the cross is that when we suffer for one reason or another, um, we train ourselves by the grace of God to give thanks. Um, uh, so we'll get to that in a minute, but in the Catholic epistle, um, <clears throat> St. Peter says, um, but the end of things is all at hand, therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers, and above all have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. And the fervent love is the fruit, right? Um, but um, the more we participate in the spiritual life and do what is right, um, God will grant us forgiveness. Um, and that's what St. Peter is talking about. Um, an interesting story in the book of Acts, which we'll probably glance over uh, towards the end, we see the disciples um, are imprisoned for preaching in chapter five, and then they're freed by an angel of God that was sent uh, by God to them. Um, and they were told to continue their preaching. And then they get arrested again and told not to preach. And, and they were beaten. And when they left the second time, they rejoiced. Why? Because they felt worthy to suffer um, for the name of Christ. Um, so this is a high level. Uh, as we'll see, but there are different steps of how to get to that level. Um, and so um, carrying the cross in the life of the Christian is mandatory. Um, <clears throat> and one important virtue of how to carry the cross is with thanksgiving, um, as St. Paul says today. So in First Thessalonians um, chapter 1, I'll just read a couple of verses from here. St. Paul says, we are bound to thank God always. Um, and here he is saying, I'm going to give thanks for you, for the church, for the congregation. Why? Because number one, I see that your faith is growing exceedingly. It's very good, right? It's that, that's what the servant and, or the parent always likes to see, the children growing right, in the faith. And the second thing is not just the faith, but the love. He says, the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So you're practicing the spiritual life, right? Um, 
Then the third characteristic, he says, <clears throat> so that we ourselves boast to be among the churches. We're so proud of you. We're telling everyone how great you are. Why? Because your faith, patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So when we carry the cross with patience and with faith and with thanksgiving, uh, this is one of the fruit of, um, of having the good seed in the good heart. Okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, in a similar manner, when God sees us bearing our sufferings um, with patience and faith and love and thankfulness, then it makes him happy um, and it makes us close to him. Okay, so <clears throat> um, how do we get there? Uh, we have to start somewhere, right? So um, His Holiness Pope Shenouda, blessed memory, um, has a whole book on Thanksgiving, right? And in it, um, he talks about the different levels of, of thanks, right? So the first thing he says, okay, we give thanks for the big things that God has granted us, right? So we're happy uh, when it's our birthday. We, we're happy when we graduate. We're happy when um, we're celebrating a big event like a marriage, right? Um, we're happy when we think of the salvation that God has given to us uh, and granted us, like we say in the Thanksgiving prayer, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to him, um, spared us, supported us, and brought us to this hour. Um, <clears throat> and so um, that's the first level. Uh, the second level um, is to give thanks for not just the huge things, um, which are important, but a higher level of things is to even thank him for the small things. Why? Because God is in control of everything, big and small. Um, and so uh, these are the things that might be, uh, we're not aware of until we practice um, on how to give thanks more. And this is why, especially during this time, parents will encourage their kids to, to exercise their minds and thinking of what I need to give thanks for. And we adults as well need to practice this because it's not just the big things, but even every breath that we take, we can't do so without the grace and the blessing of God. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes it's, it's only until we get sick, like the people with coronavirus, they, they, they um, look upon those days where they could breathe easily and say, now I, I understand how I need to thank God for, for every breath that I'm able to take in his name. Um, so those are the big things and the small things. And then there's also the invisible things, the things that we don't see. Um, and sometimes the things that we don't see are more worthy to be uh, thankful for than the things that we do see. Because a lot of the things we don't see are the things that will remain forever, right? Um, and um, uh, this is part in realizing not just what we have, but who is the one who is giving it to us. And that's why in the Thanksgiving prayer, we, we call him the beneficent or the, the, the one who is all good and all giving and all gracious to us. Um, and so this is the purpose of why we thank God, to re realize how, God, how great God is, <laughs> okay? Um, and he's the only good one who does perfectly good, right? Even though evil is around us and surrounding us, and even like Joseph said, uh, to his brothers, you meant evil for me, but God meant it for good. So even though difficult things happen for us, God can turn it into good, or he has a good purpose behind that bad event um, that happens upon us. So because we don't see everything, um, and it's not just the things that we don't see, it's the future. We don't see the future either. Um, and that plays a big important role in helping us count on our faith when we are experiencing a difficult, because we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Um, and so uh, that's the third level. The fourth level is, so when I have that in mind, all of those things, the big and the small and the invisible, then I, sh I train myself to give thanks for everything. As St. Athanasius says, a Christian is always thankful. It's hard to be always thankful, but that's why the church places it 
in every prayer. We don't just say, okay, today's Thanksgiving. We say every day is Thanksgiving, right? And every prayer, we have to have Thanksgiving. Um, and the epitome of all of our prayers is the, the liturgy, which we call the Eucharist, which translates to Thanksgiving, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> so this is why St. Paul says in his uh, book, his epistle to the Ephesians, we have to give thanks always for all things. Um, and this is our goal, to give thanks always for all things. And it's easier said than done. Um, but when we train ourselves in this way to give thanks from just the big things, to the small things and the things we don't see and the future and everything, then we can begin to practice how to give thanks even in the times of trouble and persecution and tribulation. And that's the highest level, um, to give thanks in tribulation. Um, and as we said with the, with the apostles, um, they, uh, they were preaching the name of the Lord, they were persecuted, and they were beaten and they left happy. They left happy not because they, um, they were freed, but because they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his. That's the, again, a very high level, right? Um, there was one a 17th, 17th century Bible scholar who knew all, all what we were saying, right? And um, he was walking along the street probably one day and he, his wallet got stolen. <laughs> So he's like, okay, I have to be thankful that my wallet was stolen. <laughs> How? So um, he went back home that night and wrote in his journal um, reasons why he should be thankful that he was robbed. <laughs> so the first um, reason he gave was um, because I was never robbed before. So see how like we're training ourselves, okay, what can I be thankful for? This was the first time. You know, I lived all these years before and I wasn't robbed, right? The second thing he gave thanks for was because he took my per wallet, he, he said purse, but he <laughs> took my wallet, but he didn't take my life, right? It could have been a lot worse. Um, uh, so we're th now we start thinking of, well, what are the other things that God has saved me from? It, it's, uh, thank God it stopped here and it wasn't uh, in a more difficult situation. Another thing he did was he said he thanked God for that um, although the guy took all that he had, it wasn't much to begin with. <laughs> so it could have been a lot worse if he had a lot more money. Um, and the last thing he said, well, I think, uh, I was thankful that it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed, um, which was a much worse situation that if he was the person who stole, like his salvation is much more in trouble, right? So we have a lot of things to be thankful for. And sometimes the negative things is what help us to see positively. Um, and I think I used this example before, but um, like, you know, when you study math, we're gonna do a little math today <laughs> and a little physics, okay? Um, so the first thing is the absolute value sign, right? So whatever number you put in, the absolute, the two bars, right? The absolute value sign, um, everything comes out, what? Positive, right? So these two bars, these two limits are the life of the Christian. Anything that comes into my life, I have to learn to be positive, to, be, to give thanks. Um, and it's, it's not, it's easy to give thanks when things are going good, <laughs> but it's a lot harder to give thanks when they're not going good in my eyes. But when I have faith on him who controls all and who loves me more than I can understand, I, I practice and I trust and I depend my faith upon the one who controls all things. And he knows and he allows all things to work for good or towards the good. Um, same thing with uh, St. John the Beloved. Right? We know his story. He was a great disciple. Um, but for one reason or another, um, God wanted him to go into exile in the middle of nowhere on an island. <laughs> Some people say, well, this is, this is the result of someone who was faithful to God and who loved him um, so much that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved, right? Because he, of course, Jesus loved all, but 
St. John probably loved um, with a, a, a love that might have been more than the other disciples. Um, and so he was exiled in, into an island. And so some might, someone might say, why should I thank the Lord for that? I'm in the middle of nowhere. I can't serve. I can't pray uh, liturgy, right? I can't um, uh, help anyone in need, right? But this was the place in this time of tribulation where he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And instead of celebrating liturgy, he saw the revelation, right? Um, he saw heaven opened. He th saw the throne of God surrounded by the heavenly hosts. Um, he saw um, things that no eye has seen, right? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes if we look past or look above the things that we are suffering from, um, we begin to understand the love of God and sometimes the purpose of why he allowed these things to happen to us. And that's why the church says to thank God for everything, concerning everything and in everything. What does that mean? We're <laughs> just playing uh, um, with words here. Um, <clears throat> well, the way I think of it, I don't. I hope it's right. Um, it's it's kind of like we think thank God for the past things and knowing the things that He has already done for us. We trust in Him in the present to do what is right for us in the future. Right. So um, we thank God for everything that he is giving us now, um, even if it's tough, because he has been good to us and he will be good to us. Um, and so we shouldn't limit our vision and our faith on the things that we can see or the present time or the present circumstances. Um, because if, if we're limiting ourselves to just um, certain circumstances that we can trust and love and, and have faith and be thankful for, um, then we become dense. Um, <clears throat> or we become, uh, I'll explain what, what that means, uh, but we'll sink without faith. And that's what happened, um, as you know, in the story of Simon, uh, when the Lord commanded him to walk on the water, and he was doing fine. Um, although probably no one uh, else has ever uh, performed that miracle before, um, walking on water in the same way as, as the Lord did. Um, but he was doing okay until when he stopped looking at Christ and he looked around. Um, and so, or maybe he overthought it, right? So maybe one thing we can um, uh, use to remember this, when we overthink, we sink. <laughs> and, and when we keep our eyes on the prize or on Christ, right? Um, we rise. So um, <clears throat> what causes someone to sink is when um, they are uh, they are focusing more on the problem than on who has the solution. Um, or another way of saying it, uh, we'll do one more um, uh, science formula. <laughs> okay, so density. Okay, um, <clears throat> A density is what mass over volume, or it is like so. We have a little paper. Let's say we have a little paper clip um, that's an ounce, right? Um, you put it in water. What happens? It sinks. Why does it sink? Because some people say just all the heavy things sink. Not necessarily, because we have you know huge um, uh, boats and ships and and tankers that float. Even some houses can float on water. Um, so it's more not just how heavy something is, but how compact it is, right? And how uh, closely um, uh, everything is together, right? So you can have two things with the same mass, with the same weight, but um, based on how, how it lands on the water, um, like if you take that paper clip and um, flatten it out completely, um, could float, right? Um, or curve it a little bit, but like stretch it out as much as you can, it could float, right? So the idea here is um, we all have problems, right? But the way I look at it and am I stretching it out 
along the water? Am I realizing the glory and the power and the wisdom and, of God? And am I trusting in him? If I realize that my solution, who is God, is bigger than my problem, then the density is small. And when the density is small or less than water, then, then the thing um, will float. Hopefully that makes uh, a little bit uh, of sense. Um, <clears throat> so the question is, what is bigger in my mind or in my heart, my problems or my solution? Um, everything that difficult that is going around me because who, who can um, claim to say that the Christian will not suffer in the, the, uh, the contrary, right? Um, the Lord said in the world you will have tribulation. Um, suffering is, is a normal thing to expect um, for the Christian, but when our solutions are bigger than the problems, then it's easier to deal with, and we find ourselves floating on the water and not sinking. Um, so the question is not, I hope nothing bad happens to me, but the, the question should be, I hope when something bad happens to me, I have enough faith and trust in God to realize that it will be okay. And when it is okay, I train myself to give thanks. Um, and I try not to just give thanks after the fact, um, but of course we should give thanks after the fact, but then we put it in my, our minds and our hearts for the next time something difficult happens. Um, and, and that will help us trust in him more um, for the next time. So th this was just a, you know, a little contemplation on how we should learn to give thanks in our time of tribulation. And this is how the Christian carries the cross with, with thanksgiving. Um, and uh, the Lord will reward all of those who do so uh, with faith. Um, we, uh, oh, I'll leave you with one more story. Um, the same thing, like when we were talking about density and things sinking and things rising. Um, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha, uh, the disciple of Elijah, <clears throat> um, was filled with the grace of God, as we know. Uh, he asked for double the spirit of Elijah. And one day he was walking um, and he found some uh, workers that were cutting down trees. <clears throat> one of them had an iron axe. Uh, head, which was like very heavy, of course, um, but he he borrowed it. He, it wasn't his. And as he was working, the whole thing fell into the water. So he was losing his mind um, because it was borrowed, right? What am I going to tell the person that I, I, I probably it was expensive? I don't know. He didn't have money to, um, obviously, he was a worker. So anyway, Elijah comes across and um, he does one odd thing right he he cuts off a stick and he throws it in the water and the the iron floated <laughs> right um <clears throat> so uh it's it's an odd story but here it kind of reminds us of what we were saying before that um our problems are difficult and it will cause us to sink but what do we have to throw in the wood always reminds us or symbolizes the cross when we go into the problem with the cross, um, with not just the physical cross, but with the mindset of what Christ did for me, uh, how his suffering is my glory and my power, and the way he endured the suffering was the way I need to also carry my cross and endure the suffering, then the, uh, I won't sink. The problem won't let me sink. The problem will be solved. Um, so those are just a, a few comments on how we train ourselves by the grace of God to give thanks even in tribulation. And glory be to him now and forever and to the age of all ages. Amen. Um, that's all we have.